Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Fake Nerds Watch for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Cookie and I, full disclosure, had a, had a spirited conversation about a very different franchise just before recording. Uh, so this will be hopefully just as fun. Um, I'm with, as always, uh, from Just a Little Podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why my voice is hoarse, because of our spirited conversation prior. Um, with me, as always, is, is Cookie from Just a Little Podcast. How are you, sir? Doing very well. Doing very well. And yes, it was very spirited, but I think this is going to be, I guess, kind of like the complete opposite of the conversation we had because I feel like we are really enjoying the um, this show a lot, and I, I enjoyed this episode. So, yeah, so of course, uh, if you guys don't know, I am from the Fake Nerd Podcast. Uh, this is Fake Nerds Watch. All right, so why don't we get right into it? This is episode six. Lift us, lift us where suffering cannot reach. Yes. This is a very good title. It's a very Star Trek title. It is. It's very good. And it fits. It literally fits the episode perfectly. Oh, boy. Uh, so this is a this was a hard episode to watch. Oh, um, yeah. Are you watching the Orville, by the way? I am. Uh, I need to catch up. I watched episode one. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure how I feel about the Orville right now. I've only seen episode. We're going to try to watch episode two. There's only two episodes out so far, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to try to watch episode two later on today, my wife and I. Let me know what you think. Um, it's not that I have anything wrong against the Orville. I just, I want, I'm waiting for the one that reminded me why, like, the you know, the fun adventure Orville, which we haven't yeah. gotten quite yet. Because okay. the first episode, as you've seen, is very heavy. Yes, it is. Complete, complete different direction than what I was used to. Yeah. Um, but let's, not, we're not here to talk about the Orville. We're here to talk about Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Um, so... Let's do it. What'd you think about this one? I thought it was good. Definitely a really, really great episode. Like you said, I think it it was um, a tough show to watch in a sense because of the, the sequence of events that took place. And you, I got attached to different characters were, that were in here. And there was a lot of emotions going on. And a lot of the plot that happened in previous episodes kind of really culminated into this episode. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things were trying to get answered and trying to get fulfilled. And I was like, wow, it's a lot to unpack. Yeah, it, this was a hard one to watch, uh, especially once you realize what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is that the triumphant return of Sam Kirk. Yes. <laughs> so happy he's back. And it he's, was brief, but happy he's back. He's back. He has one scene and then he leaves the show again. Yeah, um, that guy's got one hell of a job. He is he. You know, the collectively, he has not had he has not had a half an episode yet. Yeah, he's just kind I, of appears. I think they're gonna give. They, they're definitely probably going. Definitely probably they will give him an episode where they devote a lot of time to him. He, he's got to be important somehow because like why why have him on this ship? We're not him? going yeah. to do him. In it. I wonder if maybe. I'd, I'd really be interested to see if he's still on the show next season. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see him in, uh, because we know that Kirk, uh, James Kirk is showing up. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see him interact with his brother. Um, Cause we never, we don't get that in the original series and Correct, to, to, yeah. to get that would be really nice because the first time we, as we've mentioned before, and people who are watching this, obviously know the first and only time we ever meet Sam Kirk, he's dead. Yep. Um, but yes, wonderful. Sam Kirk is back uh oh, we'll see what happens next um Absolutely. so this uh episode has um majalis right that's the planet they're coming from majalis yes. mm -hmm. the enterprise is receiving a distress call in a system that uh pike has been in before um and they're they get the they get a distress call and the ship that's attacking them that's attacking the other ship starts attacking the enterprise and it has one of my favorite one of my favorite moments of Captain Pike when he's just sitting in the chair and he's just like the the, the ship like attacks the Enterprise and he's just like it's damage, damage. <laughs> like he's like point like, two percent. Did that even touch us? Like what? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Um. He's just so flabbergasted. He's just like, why would they do that if we're so superior to them? Mm -hmm. Um. They also have a the ship that's attacking the other shuttle has tow cables. A little little callback to Enterprise. Yep. Prior prior to tractor beams, they had tow cables. It was good, good stuff, and we got the chance to see Ahura make a make a little error, which it doesn't happen very often in Star Trek with her calculations on shooting, and it it showcases that hey, 
this is like her first time being in this role of a- acting in attack rather than them acting in defense type of thing. Cause she's actually yeah. shooting. Yeah. Cause she's um, she should not have been at the, at the weapons console the at that point, yeah, not at all. but um, a tactical, but she is, I, li- I do like seeing Uhura's it gives, it gives Uhura a lot to do the character, a lot to do because you can, because she's on rotation, right? That's what they say that yeah. she's on rotation. Um, and we, we, last time we saw her, she was in engineering, and now she's in tactical. She's in security. I like that it gives her kind of more to do around the ship whenever the the plot basically needs to have another character like Uhura, mm-hmm. and it creates more of a. It lets us know the character a bit more, um, and then she has a, but we know like where she ends up. Like we we know that because like everything that she does leads, back leads to her right leads her back to communication which this episode um she's she re- she reads the ship's data chips she's able to to translate Decipher. them yeah uh, i think that's i think that's cool that they never lose sight of the fact that where this character is going is communications everything mm-hmm. that she is doing leads her to that chair on the on the bridge of the enterprise yeah i agree where she stays for 20 years <laughs> um all right um i also like that the majolans are more advanced than the federation yeah it's a, it's rare that you see a, a, a species more advanced than the federation but that was cool it was um the actress did you ever watch the librarians i think i asked you this before yes yes i did she's from uh the, the alara i think is her name alora okay she's from she's from the librarians I need to I need to rewatch it because I I really enjoy that show a lot. I, I know a lot of people don't, but I personally enjoy okay. it. I I took it for a sci-fi budget film and TV show. So it absolutely is. Uh, <laughs> and there's actually a, a, a librarian's reunion because Rebecca Romaine is also on that show. Okay, cool. That's Who, cool. So number one and Alara are from the librarians. I thought that was cool. Yeah. You know, hey, get get the rest of it, man. Why not? Right? <laughs> Bring back Noah Wiley. There you go. There you go. That would be great. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff. There's not, you know, I'll be honest, there's really not a lot in this episode to kind of sink your teeth in as far as like a, as far as like a discussion goes on to. It's really just kind of the it, it's one of those kind of ethical debate episodes. Yeah. Right. The um, but the debate doesn't happen until later in the episode. Correct. I don't necessarily think that's a pro- that's a problem. It's just we there's a lot of spinning our wheels in this episode. I still find it enjoyable because the um, the cast the cast is excellent. Then they're always excellent. And that that mm-hmm. kid the the first servant. Yeah. Excellent. Really, really good. Especially for a a child actor, they really did a great job with. Their lines, their lines aren't easy lines. To any mm-hmm. Star Trek line is not easy to do, I don't think. And mm-hmm. for a kid to have to become almost like a, a main part of this story, an integral part of this story, and have so many lines, be able to recite them and still have the emotion behind everything, I thought was really great. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, you know, he's able to keep up with Spock, right? Yeah, he he asked him about a calculation, and Spock's like, "I believe it's this," and he's like, "Oh, that's slow." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "That's so funny." And she and he's like, I. Uh, that's why. So that's why you have subspace relays. But I want to. But he's been. He was able to make a subspace communication that wouldn't degrade. Yeah. So he wouldn't need relays, um, which is 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 such a cool idea, um, and and also kind of um, explains the kind of this long time Star Trek, uh, uh, not plot hole, but. Um, uh, mystery almost mm-hmm. of like well how are they capable of instant communication between uh between ships and like we always knew that it's sub it's a subspace channel they go it's a, it's under space and, and but how does that work and so like oh we have subspace relays throughout the ship that we bounce off and that creates the instantaneous communication um and that it kind of i know that's been in star trek before but i think it's cool that we uh that we kind of just like solidify that that's that's what that is that's the thing that that is what what that means. Mm-hmm. One of the things I like about Strange New Worlds is how they really know their shit. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, they're really really great on it. I mean, it's it's incredible to be like to watch the show and and I mean everything they do. 
It's weird to say, but it's so right. <laughs> Isn't that weird to say though? Yeah, it's they they hit a lot of the um, uh, we talked about it before, but a lot of the requirements that are needed for Star oh, sure. Trek. They hit. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the only way to say it. They yeah. hit the requirements of making a Star Trek a Star Trek. Yeah, uh, they they but they like know their shit, right? They like the people in in this writer room in this writer's room. I can feel the love of Star Trek that I can't in other writers' rooms, and mm-hmm. I'm. I'm sorry to shit on Discovery again. I'm, we, should, we should just rename this the Shit on Discovery Hour. Um, <laughs> but it's, I don't mean to because I think Discovery is foundational. It's it, if without Discovery we don't get Strange New Worlds, and I think Discovery has some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I don't feel the love of Star Trek when I watch Discovery, and okay. I feel the love of Star Trek when I watch the show. For sure, and I think that with this episode because it. It tackles, I want to say that's what, three different ethical um, subjects where we have one um, with the doctor's daughter, I can't remember her name, and seeing yeah. that struggle that he has. Rukia? Rukia, okay. I think. So we have that one. We have the the child, and we're going to, this is, if you guys don't know, we're going to get into plot, so spoilers, but. Oh, no, yeah, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the child who is pretty much bred to be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But you have his father who is knows his responsibility as a father for this kid or father figure for this kid. And he has to choose between saving the life of one or saving the life of many. Then you have um, Christopher Pike and his new (laughs) ex-girlfriend where it's like she's the leader of this and she has one belief and he has another belief. And he has to understand that, hey just because you don't agree with what they do doesn't mean that it's necessarily wrong because what they're doing is actually right in their eyes. And you have to understand the the protocol for that and not actually change the way they do life. I want to, I want to, I think we'll probably spend most of the time on the ethical debate of this episode, um, which is fine. Um, I, I think that the, the debate of, you know, she says like, when you first met me, I was trying to find an alternative for this because yeah. they like, this was set down by our ancients and they, and we don't know why this is. We don't even know how this works. We, it's just, it is just this way. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, there's an idea of complacency, right? They, nobody on every, there's millions of people on that planet, billions maybe on that planet. And there's only one colony that broke away of, of some low tech people who are just, who, who just like, they're the ones like why don't why didn't everyone leave the planet if it was so dangerous for them and they had this idea of sacrificing a child and it's the idea like they don't actually care like i i don't believe anyway and like she has this thing where it's like can you honestly can you honestly tell me that nobody in your federation suffers no child in your federation suffers yeah at least we don't look away and it's like i think you do actually i don't think she has the moral high ground that she thinks she does here I mean, she killed the child, uh, so which obviously she doesn't. But like, it, it's interesting that this that the debate is framed as Pike losing the moral debate, but I don't think he did. I think he I think he won it because, first off, there is no suffering in the Federation. It's a paradise. It's the point of the Federation. Mm-hmm. It's the point of Earth. Um, the and then you have the idea of like everybody on this planet on Majalis is on some level okay with killing a kid. Which they shouldn't be. Yeah. Nobody should ever be okay with killing a child. I mean, and it kind of, it's unfortunate that it also airs around the same time that we've had unfortunate Death, mass shootings happened. happening. Yeah, correct. And this episode is filmed a year ago. There's no way they could have known when this was coming out mm-hmm. uh, that that would pair. But it, it does, I think, ring true a little bit more and perhaps even frames the debate differently because of ha- because of when it has aired. Because the idea of sacrificing a child for the greater good is what the is what we're talking about in Congress right now, which is not a conversation we should be having. Yeah, you know we we should be we should be trying to fu- just to save every child, mm-hmm. uh, not sacrifice one to save the many. Like why don't why didn't everyone on Majalis just leave? Yeah, and they, they, they have the was ability. A big that it raised for me. It's like okay, you guys are so far advanced of the Federation. But yet you guys could not find a habitable home to live at without having this volcanic ash sitting above you guys. And you're having to sacrifice in order to please the gods or please whatever so that this doesn't happen. Yeah. You guys could easily just leave. Find a habitable home that's not being 
taken by anybody else and start over, start fresh. You guys have the technology. It's probably would take you a few years, but I think you guys would be up and running in no time. But there's a colony already that's done it. Yeah. So it's right? like, follow them. Just move in. And it, it, it has to, it has to be because on some level, uh, Alora is ignorant to the fact that she's okay with this. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not looking for an alternative anymore. This is just the way that it is. And we are fine with it because they've convinced themselves that they are doing the, that they're, that they're not turning up. They're not turning the other cheek. They're, yeah. they're, they're, Gra they're gratified that this that this child had saved their uh, has saved their lives again, and, and, and choose or their the child is choosing it. It's not like they're forcing them to do it, but we see it. We do see it once he's like he stops and he doesn't finish the sentence. When she's like, "Do you willingly do this?" and he sees a child and he's like, "Oh my goodness, this is what I'm actually putting myself through." Yeah. I don't know if I want to do this, and it's kind of like this dogma personality of like, well. If he doesn't, he's been bred for this moment, so he's going to do it, obviously. And and he and he's and every I think everyone on Majalis is, is at this point much in the same way of like, well, this is this is a good thing. We are mm -hmm. doing this to save our people. We are doing this to think because they have been conditioned to think that it is not an option to leave the planet. Yeah, but they weren't even. The, I, I don't even think they were the first people to be in the planet because why would they? Why would anybody develop a planet that was so unha uninhabitable? Correct. And even so, it's like, okay, what if you guys were just to test the theory and just say, hey, we need everybody to evacuate by this date. Everybody has to pack up and leave. And if the planet's still there, then clearly that machine is just forfeit and it's just, it's not needed. They didn't and test all the theories they could have tested. To evacuate the planet, once again, they have the technology. They have space travel. They can evacuate the technology. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty sure the Federation would be more than happy oh, yeah. to, to move them. Yes, in a heartbeat. If it means if it means saving one life, they would do it. Absolutely. And Christopher Pike would be the first one there. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I volunteer. I'm ready to go. So, yeah, I, I definitely I feel that. And I think that with this kid, because we, we don't realize what happens until the very end or towards the yeah. very end. And we see him interact with so many different people and you start to get an appreciation and a, like an admiration for this little intelligent being mm -hmm. and seeing what he has the potential of doing and saving lives with the ability he has within him. And it's like, it, it breaks you down when you're like, wow, they, they're willing to not, sh not use this ability to go and save other people's lives. They're keeping it for themselves because they're keeping to tradition. I think, that it's a testament to not having a forward thinking mind and just yeah, being I think stuck so. in the past. You're absolutely correct because they're, they even say it's like our, our policy, it's illegal for us to share our medicine with outsiders. And it's like, well, and the, and the, even like the, like he says, the Federation has similar laws. Like actually, no, not when it the comes to medicine. Yeah. The Federation does not have that law when it comes to medicine, we can use anything. And it's like that, that, that kind of life-saving medicine that they have the um, quantum bio implants. Mm-hmm can save can eradicate diseases that the federation has never even heard of and like understandably the federation has eradicated i'm Plenty. pretty sure i'm pretty sure most every disease that what we are afflicted with now the federation has eradicated but yep. there are there are unknown diseases that we will never see that that, we, that would go out there and to have that, that would be a game changer but because these people are isolationists you know they they they're okay again they're complicit and that's why the 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 not the first servant the grand elder whatever he is um he at the end that's why it's such a big deal when he comes in he's like you know look it's not going to be a cure but i think i can help you with the theory of this and we can maybe yeah the first step to saving your daughter and it was it was it was really really great and i had i literally started getting choked up watching it because you see um his eyes and his eyes start to swell up with tears just it's not even sure it's not guaranteed it's not sure but it's just like a possibility a glimmer of hope for him and i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it but it's like yeah. that little stuff it's like oh my goodness it's so great the acting the the writing it hits so hard and these episodes aren't crazy episodes they're like they're small little windows in what's going on in this world and it's great yeah, I really appreciated um Amanga's presence in this episode because it's such a it really like helps me realize how um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh subtle his performance okay. is. 
Mm-hmm. Like when like when he's when he gets choked up, you know he's choked up, but he doesn't it's not a big show of it. Mm-hmm. He like it, it's just it's just kind of a pause like, oh, I can I'm not a good actor, so like I can't I can't mimic him. But like that he's the guy who plays in Benga is great. I can't pronounce yeah. his name, but he's a wonderful actor and I I'm glad we revisited the daughter again. I do have a question about his transporter though. Is the bio bed always there? I think it is. Okay, because like it wasn't no, there in the no, first it's episode. Not. It's not. It's not always there. I think not- because in the event they have to transport somebody in, which they did, they can transport um the kid inside and they can instantly work on them because they need to get him to sick bay. Well, no, the the because the transport they just walked him to sick bay from the transporter pad. Well, they did. Um, okay. In but the medical emergency transporter, I don't think should have a bio bed. Like I understand, like it's you know it's Mbenga's private office and probably has a bio bed for like the surge. It's probably like a surgery room also. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get that, but like, should should someone need to use that? Like Chapel did in the first episode when she needed to get to the bridge. Do you just like move it? Do you just move the bio bed out of the way? I would. Yeah. I is it just one? Is it just like one transporter there, or is it like multiple? There's, I think the emergency transport is just the one in his office. Yeah, just the one. Okay. Um, yeah, also, I mean, McCoy doesn't have it. So what happens to that transporter? Something. I think that you brought that up. I, I think that something probably negative happens, causing that to be removed. It's almost like those yeah. warnings on, like, hey, don't do this with. I don't know. Don't drink your coffee. The hot coffee. Don't spill it on yourself. Uh, up up there on the pattern buffer and fine print don't store your child in the pattern buffer long term yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and it, that's another moment where it just it breaks your heart that that's the only way his child can survive yeah when when he has on a, like he's revealed that he has it on a timer that she can that she just can leave it like mid-sentence mm-hmm. it's heartbreaking oh yeah although i like Very i mean i like it because like i get his idea because he wouldn't she wouldn't know mm-hmm. that it's happening. She'd just be stas- in stasis until she gets back. Yeah. So to her, time doesn't pass. For sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The whole like we we just don't look away. It's like yes, you do. Yes, yeah, you do. You look away. She did. You, if you thought about it, she went to the the aid of Pike, and when he woke back up, he was in her room, and then he's like, "I got to get back there," and she's like, "No, you can't unplug him." So he's yeah. still going through that process, even though she's walked off and left this kid. She doesn't sit there and watch him get completely drained. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, it seems like since the corpse was a kid, it does, it doesn't seem like they have much, they have long there. But I would imagine maybe a year in that chair mm-hmm. to drain the entire life force, and maybe, maybe it's painless, and he's just in stasis or whatever. I think but she it's, said it's painful. Did she? she did, That's yeah, awful. She said, she said it's painful. But they are Jesus. willing to do it. Man, it's it's awful to what you're going to. It's a rough episode, man. <laughs> yeah. And to think that Christopher Pike had sex with her. Shame on him. <laughs> but you know what? Good for him because, you know, he, he deserves a little fun. <laughs> he, he deserves to have sex with a monster. I mean, he didn't. I mean, he, he was like, I, he I, know. You know, I had a crush on you and she came on to him and he's like, I'm going to die anyway. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Uh, I I was thinking to myself, I was like, "There's got to be something to happen because otherwise, why didn't Spock bring him here when he got when he got in his accident in the menagerie?" So there's yeah. got to be something. Something bad has to happen for him to be like, "Yeah, actually, take me to the take me to the planet that where this other chick is because he's got another chick waiting for him on a different exactly. planet." Um. Yeah, so I was kind of like, there's something, there's something wrong here, and like the kid, and like the, I think it's a good mystery of like, why do these people want to save this kid or mm-hmm. or like capture this kid or, and whatnot, and and revealing that it's it's this, oh, these aliens want to ransom because they know how much it means to us, and to realize it, they're just trying to save this child. Yeah, it's a. It's a tough episode, man. It's a good episode, though. I I quite like the show still, and I like this. I like this episode. Absolutely. There's there's a moment where where it almost looks like a, like a small throne room, and we're seeing these guards come up, and they're 
showing off their amulets and kind of reciting back the pledge or agreeing to mm-hmm. the pledge. And instantly, like when it happened and we saw um, one of the guards kind of like run off, he doesn't kill anybody. He, he does. The only he, person he, he vaporizes one, one dude. <laughs> one person. He vaporizes to get out of the way and that's it. Everybody else, he knocks down. He doesn't mm-hmm. kill anybody else. He tries to go and kill the queen. And even so, it's. I felt like he wasn't really trying to kill her. It was more of, I'm going to use her to escape. Yeah, maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't necessarily think he was, he was interested in killing everyone, but he, he does vaporize someone. Yeah, he did. He um, did. And I was like, whoa, that was intense to see like how it went oh, through. I really like the, um, I re- we saw this in the last episode, but I really like the phaser holsters. The clip. Yeah. How he had to like yeah. Western it out. I really like these, these things. And, um, in the original series, they're just Velcroed onto a, onto a, a piece of, onto like a belt. Okay. Um, which is fine. Uh, but I really like the, I really like the kind of, I really like the belt they've designed for it. Yeah. Um, it, it's really, it's really, it's really cool. And it looks really sleek. Uh, the last time we saw a belt was in the, was in Star Trek 09 when Spock had a, had a belt that had a communicator and, and a phaser and they were just bouncing, <laughs> just <laughs> bouncing as he's running <laughs> like flaps. Anyway. All right. I should think I'm already done. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have that many notes because like the, the the meat of the episode is at the end and it is that philosophical debate. Other than that, there's really there's really not much else here in this episode, um, except for on training Uhura, which I think is good. I mm-hmm. think um Spock saving the kid um the from the from the deck 17, I think that's good. Um yeah, I don't I don't really know, man. I don't really have a lot else. Yeah, it's not, there's not really much to unpack besides just the ethical things, which I think for the most part we really did unpack. And mm-hmm. I think the only one left would be the Federation and not having them actually join the Federation or why they feel that they can. And it's because of this one situation. They'll never be able to join the Federation. They won't, yeah. And it's it sucks because it's like because of that one incident or I guess each year it happens or whatever, because of this this moment of killing a child it's like there's so much technology that can be helpful to so much of the galaxy but it's like you can't look past them killing a child because if you do that then you're just as bad as any other person out there yeah I, it's the thing of like i'm sure if they could ask the federation for help maybe the federation could figure out how to keep those cities afloat but again mm-hmm. Again, do they want to? They don't want to. But that's yeah, that's the thing. They don't want to. They don't want to leave the planet. Yeah. And they'd have to leave the planet. Yeah, it's it's stupid, but fortunately that's their way of life, I guess. It's a sad episode. It's a more the more I talk about it, it's a sad episode. Maybe that's why I wanted this to, I want this one to be short because I'm like, this is just sad. Yeah. I don't like being sad. I do have a question for you. Yes, shoot. So last episode, you talked about how you watched the trailer for the next one. Where are you watching these trailers at? Are you watching oh, it in the Twitter? Oh, Twitter. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, I, can, do you watch the show that's that's kind of attached to this thing? I forgot what it's called, but it's like Oh, Ready Walking Room. Ha- yes, Ready Room. Yes. Are you watching no. that? Oh, okay. I I thought about it, but I'm not. I don't love Will Wheaton as much as everyone else. I'll be honest. What? Um, I mean, I like Will Wheaton. He's a cool guy. Uh, I'm sure I, I'm sure I get along with him if I met him, uh, but I don't really like watching him as like a, as like an MC. I don't think he's a very okay. good like interviewer. Gotcha. Um, I so I follow the um, Star Trek on Paramount Plus uh, Twitter account. Okay. And uh, about Saturdays uh, they released the trailer for the next for the next week's episode. I gotcha. Sweet deal. Okay. Pirates next week. Really? I'll I'll definitely yeah. probably tune that on to go and watch that a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for a, I don't think this episode is bad. I think this episode is very good and it continues a very strong season. I just think that like, this is one of those episodes. This is this episode of Star Trek where you, where you don't come away feeling good. Yeah. And I think that's important there. I, you're going to be able to probably help me out a lot more than this. As far as where it came from, there was an episode where there is this wall and behind the wall is a recording that's playing on loop type of thing. And they're the higher calling, the higher being. 
Do you remember what Star Trek that was from? Because this episode reminded me a lot of that, where they were just following what was happening and they were, goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. <laughs> I don't I, I don't know if it was Deep Space Nine. It was these triangle pyramids that were sitting there and they went inside the pyramid. No? I don't remember. Oh, man. It, hopefully somebody will be able to help us out. But there's these giant pyramids. They would go inside there. Yeah. Go in the comments in the, in the comments below, let us know what this episode is. Yes, please, please. I'm going to have to research it because it's it just reminds me so much of that. And they would follow everything that was said, and they don't know why they were following it. And then they eventually broke through this wall, and they realized that behind it was nothing. And it was just a recording of what the past had said, and they just kept following it. Interesting. I don't oh, remember. Man. Do you remember what Star Trek? But that's era? the thing. I want to say it's Deep Space Nine, but I could be wrong. Interesting. Um, yeah, this I mean, this is kind of the, one of the ones like, you know, at the end of City on the Edge of Forever when they have to let Edith Keeler die. Like this is one of those episodes where it's like, you know, we may have the moral high ground, but we didn't win this one. And we mm-hmm. just kind of feel shitty because we just watched it. We we had to let a kid die. Yeah, because we we there's no we we can't interfere. We can we, and even like Pike start Pike tried, but he literally fought. Yeah, and I'm glad that he did. But like, it also he would have doomed the entire the entire species if he had succeeded. Mm-hmm. And that creates a whole other ethical debate of like, should he have fought? And it's like I I believe he should have. I believe he should have done everything in his power to try to get that kid out of there. Yeah, and he did and he did. But it's. It, yeah, it you, you definitely. This is one of those ones where the Enterprise flies off, and everyone just kind of feels like shit. Exactly, like crap. We could have done more, but we couldn't have done more. Yeah, I, like I wish we could have done more, but there's nothing else we could have done. It stinks. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm good. I don't want to be sad anymore. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to find this thing for you, and then when I do, I'll let you know. I'll leave it right. in the comments because nobody does. Good. Good deal. So why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we be done? Sounds good. Why don't you plug your stuff, Cooks? Sweet deal. Um, I'm Just Little Podcast Cookie. You can find a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, you name it, I am there. Dropping a new episode every single Tuesday. Um, you can find me here as well. I've been trying to drop more videos, so check out my video. I dropped the video not too long ago. Um, that's about it. I'm on Patreon where I do a couple of review shows on there. I have a Star Wars show. I have multiple Star Wars show. I have a Harry Potter show. Um, I'm going to soon have an X-Men show coming up in the near future. So be on the lookout oh, for really? that. You. Yeah. We're going to talk about the, the animated series and kind of go through all the animated series of Star Trek, of Star Trek, of X-Men. Nice. That's pretty yeah. fun. So yeah, that's about it for me. All right. Um, so guys, this is Fake Nerds Watch. Um, I hope this made you a little happier than the episode itself. Um, <laughs> maybe not because this is a downer. Um, yeah. It's fine though. Like I like I like the show a lot. I like this cast a lot. It's still a great show. Um uh yeah, so there's plenty more fake news watches. Um we there's uh what do we got? We got Strange we got Stranger Things. We have plenty of other Star Trek shows if you want to go back to the catalog. We got Stranger Things. The first episode is uh, episodes one through seven. The next episode will be when that show when the next two episodes air, uh part two. Um, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. A new episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi was just put up. That's three and four. So we got one, two, and three. One, two, three, four. Um, so far, we're all caught up there. Miss Marvel is coming next week, thereabouts. We'll be putting up two episodes of Miss Marvel. Um, and, ooh, ooh, what else? There's a lot. Um, I already said Miss Marvel. No, Jurassic Park. Oh, later. Um, okay. Oh, there's... There's another fitness watch though that we're doing. The boys, the boys. Okay. We just did episodes one through four of the boys. Um, that was a lot of fun. That's a great show, guys. And the boys is the boys is a great show. Who knew? Um, <laughs> a big, a big surprise. Um, so stay, so take a look out for that. That should be up the, coming soon. Um, big news, guys. Our sixth anniversary is here. Our sixth anniversary of the podcast. We've been doing the Fickner podcast for six years. It is as we are recording it today, June twelfth. It's already here. Congratulations! Can you believe it? We've been doing this for six goddamn years. <laughs> it's a long time. Um, many people would have quit by now with our view count, but no, not us. 
Um, so we have a we have, to celebrate. We have a special. Um, the special, the sixth anniversary special, is about three hours long. If you want to check it out, um, we always put out a special for our sixth year. It's not as grand as our fifth year anniversary, which if you have not checked that out, you should. Um, but our sixth anniversary is a lot of fun. Still, it's great to hang out with everyone. Just kind of gab about our show. And if you want to hang out with us, that's up now. You can check that out. Um, yeah, there's also a, a speaking of Jurassic Park, there's a Jurassic Park special. Myself and Sparks Witty, who you saw last week on this show, um, did a Jurassic Park rundown. We did one through five of Jurassic of the Jurassic Park films. That was that was a lot of fun. I'm really happy we got to do that. I love the Jurassic Park franchise. It was really great to find to get to talk about them in depth in the way that we did. Um, and the episode that has just passed, because as of recording, it is not aired yet, but as of this being out, it is out. We have just reviewed Jurassic World Dominion, the sixth and final entry in the Jurassic franchise. So Very stay awesome. tuned for that. And uh, coming up, Lightyear. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I'm excited for that. And speaking of Jurassic, uh, Jurassic Park, you actually wrote an article for Screen Rant, and it was wonderful as well. I wrote a lot of Jurassic Park articles. Um, so you can, um, I'll plug those towards the end, actually, uh, because let me just say we have a tea public and we have a Patreon. If you want to support us financially, you can find all these links below or on our website, fakenerpodcast.com. Fakener, Fakener Podcast on all the social medias. Excuse me, fakenerguys at gmail.com. I'm a BC McClure on Instagram and Twitter. And as Cookie, so you're not over here, you're over here. And as Cookie <laughs> has, has already said, um, uh, yes, I've written a bunch of Jurassic World pieces uh, leading up to Dominion. I wrote a few for Screen Rant. Um, if you want to check those out, which I quite enjoyed uh, writing those. I could write those in my sleep. I feel like I did. Um, I And for Atomic Geekdom, I wrote a piece on the Indominus Rex. I think the Indominus Rex is a really great villain. Um, and so I wrote about, I tried to write about why, why, I, thought, why I thought so. So that's, that's available now. You can check that out. Um, I also write on Atomic Geekdom a series called Revisiting the Infinity Saga, where I go through um, fit where I'm going through 50 what I believe defining moments of the MCU. If you want to check those out, so they're all there. And I also edit for kaijuramamedia.com. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And Cookie, where can I find you? Uh, on Instagram, just little podcast. On Twitter, at just podcasting. I'm on uh, TikTok as well, dropping small little unboxing videos on there um possibly just a little podcast or just podcasting you'll find me i'm i'm there somewhere i love it i love it when you can't even remember your socials <laughs> um okay guys until next time you see us and hopefully for a much more fun episode to discuss yeah. li- uh, live long and prosper